Well, let's return to our top story now, and that, of course, is the flooding in Libya. More than 5,000 people are now feared dead and thousands of others remain missing. Well, we can now go live to Beirut and speak to our Middle East correspondent, Lena Sinjab, who is watching developments from there. Um, Lena, the death toll appears to be climbing now uh, 5,000 feared dead and it's predicted it's just going to get worse. Definitely. Unfortunately, the situation is really devastating in uh, the port of Derna. I mean, people are just counting the dead, waiting to retrieve bodies from uh, from the sea. Most of most parts of Derna have been enveloped by water along with its residents. So uh, there is a huge concern that the death toll is going to only rise. And the problem is the uh, the, the flooding, the storm it caused huge damage to infrastructure. Roads are destroyed. So aid and medics and you know support is going to be challenging to arrive uh, in time uh, for the rescue operation. The locals there are working hard around the clock to find their relatives to, you know, retrieve bodies from, uh, from the sea. But it's going to be a really um, difficult situation for them. And tell us more about Derna, which is where much of the fatalities so far have been reported. So basically, Derna is like lies, you know, 250 kilometers away, uh, 250,000 kilometers away from uh, the city of Benghazi. And it's surrounded by the uh, by uh, the the mount uh, the green mount and and you know when the storm happened apparently one of the big dams on top of the hill collapsed and the flooding caused another collapse of another uh, you know dam and you know bridges destroyed road destroyed so if you look at pictures satellite pictures of before and after uh, the storm you know most of the city of Derna basically disappeared, it was washed with water. And, you know, uh, the situation in Libya is not great in terms of infrastructure and health system. It's been, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, damaged and, and you know, uh, crumbling over the past decade because of the conflict between two rival parties, one leading uh, the east side and one leading the west side. But at this time of this crisis, this, you know, national crisis, uh, I think everyone wants to you know, get along to uh, provide aid and help that is needed. The problem is the infrastructure is not helping a speedy operation uh, to rescue. You talked about these rival factions and this conflict that, of course, we've reported on over the years in Libya. How much will these rival governments um, come together, though, to actually ensure that people get the help they need? Well, we've already heard from the internationally recognized government in Western Libya that, uh, you know, they've called on the area as, you know, um, you know, uh, an, an, in an area in a, a disaster zone that needs international help, uh, that they already, you know, mobilized all and, and ready to mobilize all uh, their capacities and personnel uh, for the help needed. I mean, the uh, government in the eastern side, you know, uh, in the devastated area are also, you know, saying that we need to step in, we'll provide aid. But the problem is the logistics. This is not an easy or a small scale catastrophe. It's a large one that, you know, the city, the, the country has never witnessed before. It's a, nation, a natural catastrophe as, long, as well as like a human one with a dam collapsing. So it needs international effort. Right now, the Red International Red Cross uh, uh, um, Federation is on the ground. But I think, you know, in the coming hours and days, we'll need the city and the area will need more and more help from around the world to come in. Lena Sinjab in Beirut. Thank you very much for the moment. Well, Lena was mentioning the Red Cross. Well, Caroline Holt is the Global Director for Operations at the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent. She says putting, on, putting a number on casualties will be incredibly difficult. This is a huge disaster, uh, and this would have overwhelmed uh, many nations had it happened. Uh, the unprecedented levels of rain that were received, plus this, uh, these weaknesses in infrastructure that we've seen that have really created this disaster, are huge. 
The numbers will unfortunately, no doubt, the number of dead will no, will no doubt go up during the course of today as the picture starts to become clear and the floodwaters start to recede. But it's very difficult to put a final number on those, uh, on those dead, on those missing. We don't know how many people would have moved far away from this scene in order to make themselves safe. And it would have necessitated a journey of a long way in order to make uh, one safe in this scenario because of the extent of the flood water. But it's really unclear uh, right now. I think we know those numbers are between two and 5,000 dead. Uh, and you can just see that it, it must be a very difficult situation to uh, quantify.